Hello scholars! Today we are talking about something that's awesome, something that we all love, that moment where we get off in the bathtub and we get to play in the water, the swimming pool, we get to play in the pool. If you go to the ocean, you get to play in the ocean because they all have water and water is so much fun to play with and we actually get to play with it and call it science. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite physical properties. Remember that physical properties can be used to break, to classify objects into groups, right? Physical properties are measurable. They involve our senses, what we can see, what we can hear, what we can smell, what we can taste, what we can feel. The table is very smooth, but the wood block over here is slightly rougher. So I could break those into groups based on objects that are smooth or objects that are rough. So there's a bunch of different ways that we can use physical properties to break things into groups. And one of those ways is around sinking and floating. We can classify objects based on objects that float and objects that sink. A real big time word that they use for that is density, right? And so one cool way to remember it is if I make an M with my fingers, I see that my fingers point down. So if an object is more dense, it sinks in water. And if I make my L with my other finger, an object that's less dense actually floats or goes up in water. So my fingers can literally help me to remember the connection between less and more dense objects. So one way to show that is a really, really simple way is we know that this balloon that I just blew up in my favorite color blue is full of air. And we know that the, the air particles uh, it's full of carb, carbon and oxygen, a whole bunch of other stuff. It's probably full of more carbon. Dioxide. Anyway, it's full of a gas. It is full of a gas in its simplest form. It's full of a gas. And we know that the gases are more spread out, right? And since the gases are more spread out, then the particles are further apart and they're moving all around crazy. Well, these water particles are closer together. They're, they're more compact together. So when I take this balloon, if I drop it on the top, because it's less dense, it's going to float. So it's less dense, so it's going to float on top of the water. And I can take this and try to shove it down but you can literally feel the balloon because it's trying to get back up. And if I let it go, it splashes water everywhere because that's just too cool. And that's what always happens, right? Another analogy that you can use for that, it's not a direct replica, but we can look at something like a sponge, right? So we know a sponge is very porous. It has a whole bunch of holes and those holes are going to fill up with air as well. So you can take this sponge and when I sit it on the top of the water, you're also going to notice that it stays up for a second. But if I take that sponge and I squeeze it and then I let it go, you're going to notice that it's right there with the water because it's full of water. The density of the, of the water that's in the sponge makes it kind of hang out right there in the center. So that's not a perfect picture of density, but it kind of gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. All right, so we're going to look at different items today. And I want you to pay attention to the material that the items are made out of because you can find patterns in density. Like there are just patterns to how things work. And a lot of times you can find the patterns involved around the type of material that we're dealing with. For example, if I was to take this cork, this cork is made of wood. And I was to take this cork and I can drop it off in there. Like what do you predict what happened? Like what do you think? Do you think it's going to be less dense? Do you think it's going to float? Do you think it's going to be more dense? Do you think it's going to sink? What are your predictions? Let's check it out. And then we're going to see if we can try to catch some patterns and some trends. All right. Three count. Three, two, one. All right. Notice the cork did not sink. It was not more dense. It was less dense. It is staying at the top of the water. It is floating. It is less dense than the water. So we know that a cork is less dense than water. A cork will always float in water. So we're going to go through and we're going to test all kinds of different objects made of all kinds of different materials and we're going to just see what happens. And then at the end of the day, I'm going to ask you, why do some objects float and why do some objects sink? And I'm going to ask you to compare and contrast three objects. Are you ready? All right. I know that you're ready because y'all are amazing. God, I always end up with the smartest children every year in every class. This is amazing. All right, so we're going to take a plastic chip. So this is a plastic gram weight. It's made out of plastic, right? And we're going to drop it off in the water and we are going to see if it is less dense or if it is more dense. Go ahead and make your predictions. What do you think is going to happen? 
why do you think it's going to happen? And if you don't know the why, just say, I'm not sure yet. And we'll continue to explain that as we go throughout the video. Are we ready? Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. So the plastic chip, we see it. It is more dense than the water. The cork is less dense. It floats. The plastic chip, it sank. It sank to the bottom. So it is more dense than the water. Let's go to, we've done wood, we've done plastic. Let's try something metal. Let's try this little bit paper clip. Now you know paper clip, it's so light, it's so little, so shiny. What do you think is gonna happen with the paper clip? What are your predictions? If I drop this paper clip off in the water, is it going to float or is it going to sink? What do you think? Tell me if you have a reason why. It might be a personal experience. You might have been at the swimming pool and you said, Miss Washington, I dropped something that was metal in the pool and this is what happened. So I think that blank, blank, blank because of my personal experience or I was in the ocean or I was in the bathtub and I was playing with my Power Ranger toy. And this is exactly what I, he says. Nobody plays with Power Rangers anymore. Don't judge me. I'm an old man. I don't know any better. All right, here we go. Paperclip. What are your predictions? Sink or float? Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Whoa, that one sunk and it sunk fast. Paperclip is right here. So we can visibly see that a metal paperclip sank to the bottom, a wood cork floated, and a plastic chip sank to the bottom. All right. Now we're going to do the trifecta round. So you've seen one of each object. So now we're going to see if we can do some patterns and trends. I'm going to grab a wood cylinder block, a, another, a different type of plastic chip. This one's a little bit flatter, a little bit less weight, and it is a different color. All right. And we're going to do, ooh, let's do a nail. All right. I'm going to drop all three of these simultaneously. What do you think is going to happen to each object? What objects are going to be classified as objects that sink? What objects do you think will be classified as objects that float? Feel free to pause the video to record your observations. Tell me what you think is going to happen. Write it in your journal. Get ready because it's about to go down. Here we go. Feel free to pause it if you need to. Make your observations. Five, four, Three, two, one. Oh, okay. So we've got the nail sank, the blue chip sank, and we have the cylinder wood floated. Do we see any consistencies? Do we see any observations that can we make? Can we make any patterns or trends? Are we starting to kind of get an idea of what materials are more dense than water, more materials are less dense than water, more materials are more likely to float, what materials are most likely to sink. All right, we are going to do one more and then it is all on you. I'm gonna take these over here. These are gonna be your three materials that we're gonna look at in a second. We're just gonna do two. Between a metal washer and a wood wheel, what do you think is going to happen in regards to density? I love it when we use academic vocabulary. I love it when we talk in complete sentences. Those two things are so important for scientists. So if you were talking to somebody else, make sure that we're using the words either more dense, sink, less dense, float, or you can just use the words sink or float. Either one works. Talk about the material. Go. I think that the metal washer will blank because blank. I think that the wood wheel will blank because blank. That's a wood wheel wheel, wood wheel wheel. That is a tongue twister. Peter Piper picked the pickle pickle peppers, right? I think that the wood wheel wheel. All right, are you ready? Are you ready? Have you recorded your stuff in your journal? If not, make sure you can pause at any time that you need to because we're about to do our countdown. And here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, we did it. So the metal washer, it is actually sitting right next to, on the on sink, right next to the metal paper clip and the metal nail. The plastic chips are down there 
and the wood wheel, the wood cork, and the wood cylinder are all at the top. What are you thinking? Why do some objects sink and why do some objects flow? What is up with this thing density? What is up with this thing density? What does density have to do with this? Remember, what is density? Why do some objects sink and one, some objects float? So I'm not going to do it, but I want you to give me your understanding of if I was to drop this metal spoon, this plastic spoon, and this wood chip into this water, what do you think would happen and why? Use these objects to explain why some objects sink and some objects float. Make sure we use the word sink or float. And if you're really, 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 really got an understanding, you can throw that word density in there and then it's really going to go down. All right, scientists, scholars, y'all are awesome. Hope y'all are having an absolutely wonderful day. Science is amazing. Science opens your brain. Science opens your mind to possibilities and things that don't exist yet and things that you can create and the ability to take chances and take risks and mess up and it's perfectly okay because that's what science does and you guys are amazing scientists. Have a great day. We'll be back on with more soon.